description and in the top comment. However, in a summary, essentially an Iraqi family moved into an HOA neighborhood and on the first night someone broke into their home and left a creepy welcome message. I am telling you, Mr. Abbas, there's no one here. I didn't reply, just silently watched as the flashlight dipped and walked across the walls of the basement. The small room was cramped, the clutter of the previous owners stacked in it from floor to the ceiling. A faint smell of mold clung to everything there, like glue, but there was no trace of any intruder there. You saw the boot prints, officer, I pointed out. The cop, a Joseph Gardocki, pulled his head off and scratched his bald head. Are you absolutely sure that your daughter was not the one who drew it? I gritted my teeth in frustration. Once again, my daughter is not well, but you can be damn sure she's not crazy. He put his hands up to pacify me. I didn't mean it that way, but you have to understand. All signs point to it having been done by someone on the inside. Now, we have searched the house top to bottom and found all the doors to be locked. And you have yourself confirmed that they were there that way before we arrived. I mean, you opened the basement door in front of us, right? I nodded sullenly. Right. He made a show of peeking behind a dust rattle table. So then it means that it was done by someone on the inside. And as you say, you have a daughter with a history of PTSD, panic attacks and a whole assortment of mental illnesses. I cut him off. It wasn't... Please, Mr. Abbas, he said a little firmly this time as he stopped and looked at me. You should be aware that there are consequences to filing false complaints. Please make sure not to call 911 unless there is an actual emergency. I wanted to argue with him, but what could I say? None of this made any sense. How could anyone have gotten in when all the doors and windows big enough for someone to squeeze through were all locked and shut? And I definitely knew that it was not a bite. If she had done that this consciously or not, I would have known. I still remember how badly the stairs creaked and how loud they sounded in the silence of the night. Perhaps you need a therapist more than the police. I did not respond to the comment and just followed him back upstairs, shooting one last glance at the dark and foreboding looking basement. A tall cabinet stood in the corner, an ideal place for someone to hide in. If only its doors had not been ripped off. I shook my head and stomped upstairs, reminding myself to replace the incandescent bulb hanging by a string from the ceiling so that I wouldn't have to stumble around in the dark the next time I am there. Back in the living room, I found Officer Gardocki's partner, Officer Schmidt, talking to my wife who was seated on the only sofa we had unpacked, protectively hugging our daughter. Are we done here? Joseph Gardocki asked. Yep, his partner replied, flipping his head shut. Please, Mr. Abbas, if there's an actual emergency, don't hesitate to call us. She smiled at him and then shot me an angry look. What was that about? I followed the two cops outside and waited as they got into their car and drove off, lighting up the dark street in quiet flashes of red and blue. The neighborhood looked so calm, so peaceful. I could hear crickets chattering away, oblivious to the danger my family had just been in. Hard to believe that an intruder had come to our house in a place that looked so deceptively safe. As I walked back in, I noticed the Bida was not there. She was probably back upstairs, but not my wife. No, she was still sitting exactly where I had left her and just moved into me the moment I came in. So, she remarked, anger dripping like molten waves from her voice. When were you going to tell me? Tell you what? I asked, confused. This, she yelled picking up a sheet of paper and waving it around angrily. I winced and squeezed my eyes shut. It was the document that Amanda had left for me, one that I had forgotten to tell Rabia about. How could you, Arfan? How could you hide something this important from me? It just slipped my mind. Slipped your mind? She thundered. Something that affects your family's safety? Just slipped your mind? Wait, how do you know about this? I asked. That list of rules did not contain anything strange, it was just your average HOA stuff. So how does she know about the implications of those rules, the one Amanda had warned me about? That police officer was nice enough to warn me, she replied. Yeah, he told me everything. He's been patrolling this community for a while now. And he knows everything that there is to know about this place. Everything that my husband should have told me. I learned from a stranger. It's just nonsense.